rock guitarist Bernie Marsden's Hot Licks helped launch the career of White Snake as he played on the group's first eight releases and led a major hand in composing some of the band's most renowned songs. Initially inspired to play guitar as a teenager due to such authentic blues players as Howlin' Wolf and Sonny Boy Williamson, Marsden later picked up on such 60s white blues players as Peter Green, Eric Clapton, and Jeff Beck. The early 70s saw Marsden briefly join several renowned groups, Juicy Lucy and UFO, but each time the guitarist exited before a full-length album could be completed. Marsden was also a member of a group that drummer Cozy Powell attempted to put together, Cozy Powell's Hammer, before quickly disbanding. The mid-70s saw Marsden join British prog rockers Babe Ruth for a pair of releases, 1975's Stealing Home and 1976's Kid Stuff. Before the group broke up, Marsden then supposedly turned on an offer to play with Paul McCartney, and eventually he joined up with former Deep Purple vocalist David Coverdale to form White Snake. Early on, White Snake pursued a much more bluesy and hard rock based sound than their latter day and much more successful pop metal direction, as Marsden played on such albums as 1978's Snake Bite and Trouble, 1979's Love Hunter and Live at Hammersmith, 1980's Ready and Willing, and 1981's Live in the Heart of the City, 1982's Come and Get It, and 1983's Saints and Sinners. Although the group achieved substantial success throughout Europe, Coverdale wanted to pursue a more mainstream sound to crack the lucrative U.S. market, which led Marsden's exit soon after. Subsequently, a pair of Marsden Coverdale compositions would be dusted off and re-recorded by Whitesnake in the late 80s. Here I Go Again and Fool for Your Lovin', both of which became sizable worldwide hits. It was during his tenure with White Snake that Marsden also managed to find the time to issue a pair of solo albums, 1979's And About Time too, and 1981's Look At Me Now. But instead of pursuing a solo career full-time after his dismissal from White Snake, Marsden opted to form a new band, Alaska, who only managed two releases, 1984's Heart of the Storm and 1985's The Pack, before they broke up. After laying low for the remainder of the 80s, Marsden resurfaced in the 90s, guesting on recordings by such artists as Forrest Field and Walter Trout, and forming a new group along with his ex-White Snake bandmate guitarist Mick Moody, called the Moody Marsden Band. The band usually relied on playing classic White Snake tunes live, and issued such recordings as 1992's Never Turn Your Back on the Blues, 1994's Live in Hell Unplugged and Real Faith, plus 2000s, the nights the guitars came to play, and Ozone Friendly, the latter of which was a reissue of Real Faith, albeit with a slightly different track listing. The early 21st century saw the duo joined by another former White Snake bandmate, bassist Neil Murray, which resulted in the formation of a new group, Company of Snakes, with a pair of releases soon following, 2001 Here They Go Again, Live in 2002's Burst the Bubble. Marsden has also spurly issued further solo recordings, including 1992's The Friday Rock Show Sessions and the 1995 Peter Green tribute Green and Blues. In addition to his music career, Marsden has also tried his hand at acting and has also provided soundtracks for several movie projects in both Germany and the U.S was serving as the art director, producer, and author of the three-part TV series The Delta Blues, 1926 through Urban Blues, 1960. In more recent years, Bernie has been involved in very different projects. The most unusual being two engagements at the National Theatre in London for Nicholas Heitner's productions of Shakespeare's Winter's Tale and Henry V, in collaboration with Simon Webb. He also appeared in ZDF Television in Germany for their production Frankie, a six-part TV special. 
Bernie Marsden now endorses PRS Guitars and has his own signature guitar released in 2012. He released his latest album, Shine, from Mascot for Vogue Records and recorded it at Abbey Road Studios in London and Royal Studios in Memphis. The album released in 2014 features guest appearances from David Coverdale and Joe Bonamassa. He has all produced he has also produced a blues documentary, A Day in the Delta, in collaboration with Jim Singleton, which was filmed in Mississippi. In early 2017, Bernie self-published his autobiography, Where's My Guitar?, on the tour bus with the Snakeman to get great acclaim from fans. The book covers Bernie's musical journey with humor and honesty and features a number of private, unseen pictures from his career. Bernie has played with some of the greatest rock and roll musicians of all time, and he has worked alongside Robert Plant, Paul Weller, Greg Allman, Gary Moore, Ringo Starr, Cozy Powell, Rory Gallagher, Warren Haynes, Joe Bonamassa, and many, many more. Marston's first standard came from an ad in Melody Maker Music Paper. If you got one through that, you saved yourself 20-30% from being in the shop. It was a bit messed around with and it seen better days, but it did the job. He was pleased to have one. The first sunburn he had was a converted gold top because it had a wraparound tailpiece. It was in early 50s and sprayed again. It looked really old. It was curious because a friend of his who was a guitar collector, took some pretty good photographs of it, and it had a bound headstock as well as a bound neck, so that was a bit unusual. It could have been custom built for someone. It sounded great, it had humbugging pickups, it looked like a standard until somebody pointed out it hadn't had a bridge, and I went, yes it has, it has a bridge and a tailpiece. And they pointed out it must have been a gold top at some point. He said that Freddie King used a gold top. Marsden's 59 Les Paul is better known as The Beast, and it's a guitar with an illustrious history. Marsden bought the guitar from Mark Henderson, who had bought it from Andy Frazier from the band Free. Frazier, in turn, had bought the guitar from Paul Kossoff, who, in turn, had bought it from Eric Clapton. There had been some speculation that the Beast might be the guitar that changed the world on the Beano album, but Marsden himself doesn't believe so. Regardless, he played the Beast at a gig with Wild Turkey, thanks to Henderson's cunning sales technique. I met him, I think it was in Guitar Village, in Shaftesbury Avenue. He was talking to me about Les Pauls. He said, I have a Les Paul you might like. I'll bring it to you at a show. I didn't see him for a couple of weeks, and he came to the marquee, and for some reason or other he managed to get backstage, which wasn't easy then. Between the last song and the Wild Turkey Encore, he passed me the guitar and said, why don't you use this? It's in tune. Bernie says, quote, I've had a few offers over the years for some guitars that I've got, but I kept them because I know they're going into somebody's vault and they will, would never be heard again. If I was to sell the beast for top dollar to some guy who's never going to play it, then no one is ever going to hear it. To me, that doesn't seem quite right. I don't play it often. I probably play it more than others think, but it's not kept in with the other ones just in case. <laughs> 